Hey everybody, welcome to the Apple Ninja. Today we're going to go over command line terminal, getting back to the basics, going over a bunch of different commands. I'm even hoping that I can show some of these longtime terminal experts out there some tricks. And we're going to dive in. It's going to be fun. By the end of the video, you're going to learn a bunch of stuff. Make sure you hang out to the end because I'm going to show you how to clear out all of this history of all of your uh, commands that you've typed in. So you kind of leave no trace on the system. Also, I'm going to show you a handy dandy trick on how to show hidden files on the system quickly and easily. So let's dive in. We're going to open up the command line terminal by hitting command spacebar to initiate spotlight or you can go up and hit the magnifying glass just type in terminal then I'm going to hit command plus to blow it up and I'm going to stretch that guy out alright so I want my terminal to kind of look matrix like so I'm going to go up to terminal preferences and I'm gonna open up and choose homebrew. All right, and then I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna close this window, quit out of terminal, command spacebar again, open it up. All right, and let's blow that up again. Now that I got the cool looking terminal. All right, so all of these commands, let's just start off with all of these commands that I'm going to go over, you can look at the manual page for each of them by typing in MAN and the command. So let's just do the LS command. And this is the list directory contents. So this is a good one to get to know. Um, I can scroll down by using the arrow keys down and up. All right. I can search this by hitting Command F and searching for some sort of uh, whatever I'm looking for. If I want to type in symbolic, because I see it on the screen, you're going to see it flash, and I can search. If I want to exit, I hit Q. All right, and so that's how you access the manual page. Sometimes commands don't have man pages, but you might end up having to type like ls minus h for a help page. Um, that obviously didn't do that because that's not what this command has. It has a man page and H was an actual option that it has. So the command I'm going to run um, is going to be PWD and that's going to show me the current working directory. So that's going to tell me where I'm at and you're going to see that by this tilde right there. That tells me that I'm in my user folder. This is the user that this shell is launched with and this is the name of the host system this Mac so if I type in LS and I do a whack and I'm just gonna type some stuff out and we know that Safari is an app okay so if I want to go to the beginning of this line I'm gonna do control A if I want to delete that LS I do control D and if I want to go to the end of the line, I can do control E. If I want to arrow over, actually, if I want to do an option arrow to the left, it's going to hop. Option arrow to the right, it's going to hop. And let's say I hop into the center of this. If I hit control U, it's going to delete everything bef before the cursor cursor to the beginning of the line right so I still have everything at the cursor to the end but if I hold control K it's gonna delete everything from the cursor to the end of the line all right so now we've deleted um, so if I want to clear this screen out I can do command K and that'll just clear the whole screen out <clears throat> so those are some navigation tips for kind of navigating that line because sometimes your your line arguments and everything it ends up being really long you end up with super long commands so now we know that we're in the users Apple Ninja what if I want to go to the root of the hard drive so I can just type in CD for change directory 
and I can type in a WAC and I can go to the root of the hard drive. I can type in LS here and see a listing of files and folders but let's say I want this LS command to show me more information. I can type a dash and I'm going to do an L for long format. I want to see all sorts of information about each one of these items in there. I want to do an A to show me any hidden files. I want to do an H to show me sizes of the files and folders. It doesn't, this doesn't do a good job of showing the folders, but I'm going to show you another way right after this and I'll run it. When I run this, the long format shows me all this long formatted line, right? The A is going to show me all the hidden stuff with the dot in the front, as you can see right here. And then the H is going to try to tell me the size of that folder in human readable. If I do G and F, and these can be in any order, the G is going to color code it. The F is going to add wax on the back of the folders and it's going to add like A's to aliases. So let me just run this and you're going to see. Now all the app, all the folders are a different color and they have a whack after it. All the aliases are a different color and they have an at symbol and it shows where it's pointing to. So that's kind of a nice way to list out and show that information. Now if I want to go back to my, because I'm in root right now in the root directory, if I want to go back to my home folder, I just cd, use tilde, and I'm back there. So now I can arrow up, run that command on the desktop folder, and let's say I start typing desktop, I can hit tab to auto-complete that. Um, all right, and we're going to hit enter, and it's going to show a bunch of files, a bunch of movies. It's actually showing the correct size of these files, right? But if I want to know the size of this entire desktop folder, what I can do is I can arrow up, and I'll go back, and I'm going to delete this command, and I'm going to use du minus sh. Du is the disk usage command. When I run this, I'll be able to get the entire desktop contents and the size, which is kind of nice to be able to grab that. All right, so now that we've done a little bit on how to navigate around a little bit and show what sizes and listing out files, let's try to open something. So I can type open and just drag a file in there, boom, and it's gonna open it, right? As long as I have access to open it, if I didn't own this file, I would have to type in sudo in front of that last command. So if I type in two exclamation marks, it's gonna, type, it's gonna do sudo, which means elevate this command, this next command with elevated permissions, but it's going to run this whole thing. So I'm going to just type that. And as you'll see, sudo open, it does the whole command by doing the double exclamation marks. And I'm just going to type in the password and it's going to do it. All right, so that's using sudo to, when you don't have access to a file, you end up having to use elevated admin permissions. So that is going to require a, um, password. All right, so let's move on. We're going to copy this file. So if I just drag this file, control A to go back to the beginning. If I do a copy and then control E, and I can just do users shared, and it'll copy that file into my users shared. I can type in open, um, whack users shared. That'll open the folder and show us the file. All right, let's say I want to move a file and I don't want to copy. Um, I can type in move and actually I'm going to do something kind of slick. 
I'm gonna drag this screen recording. I got a bunch of these screen recordings on my desktop, so I wanna move them all at once. Here's a power tip. You're gonna put an asterisk on the end so that it's screen, recording, and anything else that's after that. Covers it all. So I wanna move this entire, oh, I wanna move this whole thing over into, oh, I had a folder, one second. I wanna move all of those screen recordings into the screenshots folder. So I'm gonna drag that screenshots folder in there. I'm just gonna put a whack on the end and you're gonna see it happen, boom. And now they're all in there, which is a sweet way to move a bunch of files uh, super quickly. All right, so now we've done the move and the copy. Let's see what the inside of this keyword stats file, if I space bar, you're gonna see that this was from uh, Keyword Planner. I was grabbing a bunch of stats on Apple uh, keyword items. I wanna see what's in that with the cat command. And you can basically go through, oh man, tons of information in that file. So that's how you look at the inside of a file using cat. I'm going to do a command K to clear that screen up. And now let's say I want to know how many words are in this file. It's a, It's got a ton of lines and words and we're going to see, we're going to use the WC minus C and I'm going to drag this file in there and it's going to tell me there are 712,776 words. Let's check out how many lines are in there. If I hold down option, you're gonna see crosshairs and I can drop this cursor wherever. All right, and I'm gonna hit L. So 4,336 lines in that file. It's kind of fun information to find. And now if I don't want this file anymore, I can just type in remove and drag that file in there, boom, and it's gone. Just note, if I type in remove and I type in desktop here, it's it, it can delete everything. I would have to do, um, I would have to actually have a different option on here, but you need to be careful what you're typing in so that you don't remove a bunch of files, that unintended files, right? Especially when you're doing a pseudo remove, which can literally wipe your whole hard drive. If I did um, a force on this, it, it, it actually a force and recursive I believe and I if I were to run this on this it would delete it would try to delete the whole hard drive on, on me right so you want to be very careful when running the remove command and always try to auto fill right so let's say I start a type in this just hit tab oh oh it's gone <laughs> so uh, yeah you want to hit tab you want to make sure you auto complete, right? Oh. Apple Ninja, desktop, and let's say I want to delete this Mac OS Big Sur. I'm auto completing by hitting tab, all right? So I don't want to control you again to delete all that. All right, so um, if I want to find out my IP address on this system, I can run ifconfig. And it's gonna give me a ton of information. I can scroll up here, keep scrolling up to EN0, it's usually it, unless you have a VPN connection. If you have a VPN connection, you're gonna have the EN0 as well as a UTON address down here. And you'll be able to see the actual VPN address as well from running this. All right, next thing, I wanna do a Command K, clear that screen. Let's ping Apple. So we're gonna ping apple.com. And this 
shows that I am able to connect to and reach apple.com on that IP address and let's say I want to just see some more information about Apple apple.com alright and now we can see all the different addresses and all these different host names that are associated with this apple.com address which is kinda nice to see that kinda information alright so we've typed in a lot of commands and gone through a bunch of different stuff now if I wanna see what I've worked on this entire session I can just type in history and it's gonna show me all the commands that we have gone through in this session if I want to clear those out I can type history minus C and it will clear out all the commands that I just ran so now if I type in history you're not going to see anything what what you need to know is that if I had quit out of this uh, session without clearing that history it will store it in a file called bash underscore history so if you remember when I did a ls minus la on this folder here you're gonna see this bash history so let's go take a look at this so we're gonna use cat to read the file and we're gonna do bash history we're just gonna see what's in there alright it's got a bunch of information that I ran before so if I want to completely clear out my history from this, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to type a remove and I'm just going to get rid of the bash history altogether. Quit out of my terminal, reopen my terminal, and I'm not going to have anything except for a blank slate, right? It shows what I have in there and that's it. Um, that's how you clear out all that stuff. So now that you've completely cleared it, last thing that I wanted to show you was how to show the hidden files on your system. Super easy. Hold down Command Shift period and Command Shift period to hide them again. This is global. It shows all the hidden files on your system. Uh, throughout so if you keep it like that you're gonna see random locations that have files in there all right guys I hope you enjoyed this video please throw it a thumbs up and a like and all that good stuff get subscribed also I want to throw a shout out to my buddy that runs Mr. Macintosh and my other buddy that runs Swift Goose go check out those YouTube channels man they're awesome you guys have an amazing day can't wait to see you in the next video take care